Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for first coming out to this press conference. We're going to try to do our best to articulate our positions, but also to make it quite brief. In the first instance, I will be speaking to you with regards to the issue of citizen security. I'm quite certain that because you are all are from the immediate houses, you're quite aware of the current situation involving citizen security or the lack thereof, which our country is experiencing. It runs the entire gamut. I think the most recent hot button issue was the gruesome murder of Pastor Llewellyn Lucas, may he rest in peace. And the individual who is accused of being involved with that heinous crime. We at the Belize Brexit Party say definitively that the situation involving citizen security, both from internal as well as external threats is at a level that is intolerable. And that is due part and parcel to the inadequacies and also the lack of conviction that is being put forth by the powers that be. When we talk internally, we're talking about uh, citizen security involving threats from within the country. And there's also the external element in speaking of the external element, although it hasn't been a, been a buzz in the news as of lately, we remind the Belizean people that there is still the existing existential threat on Belize's sovereign territory by the Republic of Guatemala. Just the other day in the news, we saw an, an effort that was being put forth by the government with regards to dealing with Guatemalans coming over the border and working, presumably illegally. And to that we shall say that it's a good effort, but it has to be done on a consistent basis. These one-off efforts of doing it because it's fashionable will not cut it, it shall not cut it, and we have to see some consistency. That's all I have to say right now with regards to citizen security. The next thing I'd like to talk about is the issue of good governance and the need for the proper use of existing mechanisms that are at the disposal of the government to be used appropriately. In this regard, the Progressive Party is calling for a comprehensive referendum that will feature issues, social issues, that are affecting this nation. And in that regard, because we know that um, a referendum is not, how can I say, it's not a cheap process, it's quite expensive, we're calling for several social issues to be placed on the referendum to be addressed to the public. Because from the School of Governance and Public Policy, in terms of democracy, one of the fundamental things is to utilize what is at your disposal in order to gain the pulse of the people. Far too often than not, we see executive decisions coming down that are being rained upon the people. And if you are truly striving to obtain the best practices and good governance practices and principles, then we believe that the referendum is a viable means by which to seek that. The first issue <coughs> excuse me, that we propose shall be placed on this comprehensive referendum that we will be calling for is whether Belize should go, excuse me, should agree to take the matter of Guatemala's unfounded claim to the ICJ. Well, that's a given because there is supposedly going to be a referendum on that. So we're saying tack on these other issues to it. The second, and this is something very critical because after three successive victories at the polls, the administration of Prime Minister Dean Barrow still refuses to sign on to the UN Convention Against Corruption. Now, if you feel that corruption is not a problem in this country, I have to ask you which country you're living in, because you can see corruption everywhere you go, and most unfortunately, it's at the highest levels of government. So the second issue is whether the GOB should sign on to the UN Convention Against Corruption. Because if the Prime Minister seems to have a problem with it, you're saying take it to the people and see what the people say. The third 
is the issue of whether marijuana should be legalized in Belize. Fundamentally, I will say on that issue that Belize has been subject to the dictates of external forces with regards to this issue. For example, in the United States, you know that in certain states, marijuana is legalized. And one of the reasons that we are looking at this particular issue is because, number one, the current status of marijuana in terms of beliefs, it adds to it adds to a less than ideal situation for people who are already oppressed. When you look at the situation in the United States, there are certain states where it's legalized, and from the legalization of it, monies are being allocated for appropriation to social projects and programs. So therefore, within our perspective, that is something that should be put to the people of Belize with regards to seeing what is their pulse on the issue. And the fourth and final issue that we are going to seek to have placed on a comprehensive referendum is the people's perspective with regard to the Chief Justice's ruling on Section 53 of the Criminal Code. Now you might say that the ruling has already taken place. Yes, it has. But in the effort to seek the best principles and practices toward achieving good governance, what can it hurt to ask the people what is their position on the ruling? Those are the issues under that heading. Also, switching gears a bit, we would like to comment on the continually spiraling of downward spiral of elected officials and issues of misconduct. I believe that the other day uh, there was a situation with the Deputy Prime Minister's meeting. I shall not speculate in regards to the particulars of it, but on issues such as that, we will simply say that with regards to elected officials, they must be they must be held to a higher level of accountability. So we're calling on the Prime Minister, also the authorities, police, to ensure that a thorough investigation is done with regards to that. And in fact, if another vehicle is purchased, where do you think that money is going to come from? It's going to come from taxpayers' dollars. Finally, with regards to issues of governance, and it ties into the whole concept with regards to the fourth point that I mentioned involving the call for a comprehensive referendum. We are very, very dissatisfied with the Prime Minister in his determination as the head of government that he shall not appeal CJ's ruling with regards to Section 53. Now, with regards to the efforts of the Belize Progressive Party in terms of our concept of calling for this comprehensive referendum, I'd like to turn the matters over to our treasurer, Mr. Bobby Lopez, so he can expound a bit. Bobby? Okay, good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as you all know, thanks. As you all know that um, we really only had one referendum in this country and that was the referendum whether we wanted an elected Senate and it was tied into the election of 2008. And then later on, Oceana tried to trigger a referendum uh, against offshore drilling. Well, we have done our homework and that exercise cost in the vicinity of $300,000. Now, we are prepared at the Belize Progressive Party to embark on triggering another referendum so that these real national issues can and will force the government, once it is successful, and we feel it can be successful, especially the plethora of issues we would be placing on the ICJ 
referendum because that is coming whether we like it or not. And so we are prepared at the Belize Progressive Party to seek this funding. We think it's important enough that we will champion a people's referendum and raise that money here in the country and those outside that will not tie our hands to any special interests. Our interest is exactly what we have stated today in these other propositions that we would like to see tagged on to the referendum when it is called. Now, we don't know when that will be called, and so time is of the essence, and I have received the approval from our executive to go out now and seek the financing from those who financed us in the election, and I want to say there were people who were concerned about the corruption in this country, about the direction this country was headed, and we are confident, just as we raised $80,000 in that month, we're confident that we can raise this money. But it is up to the people. Are we going to sit back, lay down, be complacent, and have them throw this soft test as they did. It is, it is being referred to by our Caribbean brothers that Belize was the soft test. We're not soft pups. And we refuse in the Belize Progressive Party to be treated like that or to be called. Because that's essentially what it is. That, that message that came out from Jamaica that this was a soft test by that professor is exactly what the international community said. Let's try Belize. They lay back and they accept everything. Well, the Belize Progressive Party will not lay back. And as of today, I'll be calling on our financiers, mostly local. We're going to raise that money and we're going to get this, this up. And we're calling on all organizations because it will be cheaper if we can get the churches, NGOs, unions, everybody to come on board and to mobilize and to make this effort a success. And so that is what I put forward. And with the blessing of our executive, I will now, after this, be starting to call on those persons who we know will step up to the plate um, and help us to start this exercise and to make sure that it is a successful one so that it can be tied down to the ICJ referendum when it is placed. Thank you very much.